Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about how to change your ex's mind about you. Well, your ex knows you really well, and if they've been with you for an extended period of time, they probably know things about you that you don't know about yourself. There are often things that we say, we do, attitudes that we have, that we're so caught up with ourself and how we feel that we're unaware when we're doing it and our ex is used to our patterns or how we respond to things or handle things. So your ex has this feeling about you that they know who you are. They know the kind of person that you are. They know what to expect from you. They know what your strengths are and what your limitations are. And, you know, they know all the things that you do in your daily life, um, maybe how motivated you are. They just know you, okay? And they believe that they know you, which is important because their belief is obviously going to impact how this situation goes. So when your ex is breaking up with you and they're giving you the reasons why, if they're giving the reasons why, because there are lots of times where our exes only give us vague, ambiguous answers and sometimes not at all. And I could tell you it certainly feels unfair and cruel if you're dating somebody and they just end the relationship and they don't even want to talk to you about it. But to me, that's a sign of immaturity. And it takes somebody who's really done a lot of personal growth and a very kind, compassionate person to really sit down and explain to somebody during a breakup why they want to end it. Because oftentimes when they do, you just try and convince them that you'll change and that, you know, you're minimizing the issues that they're having or the, the reasons uh, that they want to leave aren't valid enough. And so that's oftentimes a big part of why an ex doesn't want to sit down with you. And not only that, but they're, all, they're also going through a lot of things and they're confused. They're trying to navigate. And so it's not easy for them to sit down um, and, and do those things. But what happens a lot of times is you're trying to tell your ex you're going to change uh, and you're going to beg and plead and do things like the handwritten letter, the grand gesture, all kinds of manipulative things to try and get what you want. But what happens is they see through it. They see that you're not really being authentic. And now I'm not saying in that moment you're not really meaning it because you probably are, yes, I will do these things. However, most people don't truly change for the long run. And that's why we have the workbooks and the Creative Healing Course because we're all about real personal growth after a breakup and we really want you to commit to it because you will change your life if you do. Now, the problem is not everybody does. And I constantly see people that after the breakup, they're motivated for a little bit, but then when they think their ex isn't coming back, they just go back to their old patterns. And then if their ex comes back, they're not ready and they blow it again. So how are you gonna change your ex's mind? You're not gonna do it by getting in front of them and saying, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna, I'm changed. I mean, how many people have said I've changed three weeks after the breakup? I'm different now. I've changed. You haven't changed. You're not even really aware of what the problems are yet. You're not really aware of what the issues, the little things that you were doing to upset your ex were yet. It takes time. It takes a lot of hard work. You can do it and you can really change, but you're not going to convince your ex after three weeks that you've changed. So don't waste your time. It only makes it worse. And then it often makes them want to test you, right? Because, oh, you've changed, huh? And then they do a few things they know are going to upset you and you falter. And then they get angry and they said, you told me you were different. I thought you were better. I thought you were going to do this anymore. And now you feel even worse. So what do you do? Okay. How can you change your ex's mind? I got a a few important points here today that I really want you to understand. So the first one that's really, really critical is respecting other people's boundaries, especially your exes. 
You have to respect their boundaries. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if you're going to repair things with them, you have to show them that you are coming from a very balanced place, which we are very imbalanced in a breakup, but that you respect what they're saying and how they're feeling. Now, that doesn't mean that everything they're saying and feeling is true, because sometimes exes will say things that aren't true. And a lot of times they will say kind of manipulative, gaslighty things to you like, well, you did this, this and that. And you're like, wait a minute, but I didn't do those things. And for a matter of fact, I felt like you were doing those things. So you have to keep in mind that your ex isn't often going to tell the truth exactly in what you did. However, you really want to think about it and consider if they are right. And if you've had other people telling you that same thing, other people you've dated, then chances are they're probably onto something, okay? If you really believe that it's something that's not true, then don't own it. I'm not saying you want to argue with them about it, but you know, you don't want to have to sit there and say, boy, I was really selfish. If you weren't selfish, okay? So just be careful that sometimes exes aren't telling the truth. But I also want you to kind of come from a place where you're trying to respect what they're saying about things and how they're feeling about things. Because they may have some valid points. And if you don't listen to those points or you dismiss them, they're going to get angry and upset and feel like, okay, you really don't get it. You're not getting me. So you need to consider all their points and figure out how to navigate those things. It's not easy to do, especially if you're trying to ascertain if those things are accurate or not. Okay. And of course, that's something we could talk about in a coaching call, because obviously when you start to give me these details, I'm going to put on the BS meter and say, all right, that feels true. That doesn't feel true. What do you think about this? And we can navigate those things. But remember, after the breakup, in many of your situations, you guys have done things to put pressure on your ex to get what you want and try and get them to change their mind. So remember that they're probably feeling maybe bullied a little bit or manipulated. Now, there are toxic, unhealthy situations out there that are outliers to what I'm talking about here. Uh, like if your ex is toxic and manipulative, I mean. But for those of you that are in relatively healthy relationships, um, you may have been pushing, badgering, harassing your ex, bullying them to get what you want, stalking them, st stuff like that. So if you did these manipulative things after the breakup and quite honestly, in the relationship, um, you got to be aware of how that's going to make them feel because they're not going to forget how you made them feel or what you did. Now, I'm not saying they're going to hold it against you forever, but they're also not going to just forget about it and think that they can let their guard down with you. So you have to show them that you respect their boundaries and you're not here to try and manipulate them. You're trying to act like a real adult. Now, of course, it's not all about them and how they feel. You also have to set boundaries too, right? So if you feel like they are trying to manipulate you or they're doing toxic, unhealthy, maybe dramatic things that are intense, you also have to set boundaries, okay? But setting boundaries isn't easy, particularly if you have an anxious attachment style. When you have an anxious attachment style, it can be very challenging to set boundaries with people because you're often afraid that they're going to leave you and that if you set them, they're going to leave you. Now, we got into boundaries a lot in the creative healing course for this reason. In fact, Coach Victoria had done so much stuff on boundaries when we were creating the course, I was like, hold on, we're going to have to scale this back a little bit because I don't want to overwhelm people with the boundary stuff. But I do know that we cover it in at least section four, five, and six of the creating creative healing course, because boundaries are critical to reattracting your ex. Okay. Now, 
It's not just cr critical to reattracting somebody, it's also extremely important when you're attracting new people. So that's why we're really gonna get into boundaries in the course with you, because you wanna set boundaries with people that you're dating and in relationships with, because they'll respect you more, and if they respect you more, they're going to love you more. Because I really believe respect and love go hand in hand. Okay, the next major point. You have to learn to regulate your emotions. This is absolutely critical. If you think you're going to change your ex's mind without being able to regulate your emotions, you're only fooling yourself. It will not happen. Okay, you have to learn to do this on your own. And many of you, most of you have never learned to do this because this is what happens in our early childhood. Our parents help us learn to regulate our emotions. Now, if you have an anxious mom like I did, my mom is an anxious person. So if she's really anxious and she's trying to soothe me. Her level of anxiety is high and she's trying to soothe me. But think about it. How soothed is she? to soothe me, not easy to do. If you had avoidant parents, they don't know how to soothe themselves. They've done it by ignoring their own feelings and dismissing how they felt their entire lives. So they're not good at it either. So learning to soothe yourself is very challenging. And again, we cover this a lot in the Creative Healing Course. We did lots of audio affirmations. I think there's nine different audio affirmations throughout the course. Some with me, some with Victoria, some with Margaret. Um, I think there, maybe it's three of each of us because you have to learn to soothe yourself. It's incredibly important to attraction. I think that all human beings struggle with anxiety. It's just the way we're hardwired. And I heard years ago, somebody describe human beings as like little, like giant blobs of anxiety. And it kind of stuck with me because it's kind of funny when you think about it. We are kind of like blobs of anxiety and just some of us are better at dealing with it than others. But when we're anxious and we're in an anxious state, especially in our romantic relationships, it causes us to do a lot of selfish, self-absorbed things. We don't listen to how other people feel because we're caught up in how we feel. Uh, oftentimes we're angry when we feel a disconnect from our partner. We're resentful. We get passive aggressive or aggressive. We lash out. Sometimes we're jealous. And anytime we see other people around our partner, we become insecure about it. I had a client yesterday that was getting jealous of her partner's daughter. And um, so I see all kinds of areas of jealousy, not just with a partner. If you are obsessed with the space that you're having from your partner, it's going to make you just preoccupied on it and you will do anything to kind of control that space. But what that often does is make your partner feel smothered and trapped and they want to push back. They want to push you away. And so you want closeness and you love and you're like, I just want closeness and love. And they're like, I can't get away from this person fast enough because you're driving me crazy. So you have to really learn to regulate your emotions. This may be you, right? All the behaviors I've described. Are you calling and texting all the time? Are you double texting? Are you contacting your ex's friends and family to get information about them, right? That's really manipulative. Um, now, sometimes we can get really desperate uh, trying to get information, you know, like where are they at? What are they doing? Are they up to no good? And I understand, I'm not trying to beat you up, but I'm trying to get you to be aware of those things because if you don't, you're not gonna truly get to a great place within yourself. Double texting, long messages, long paragraphs. I remember uh, doing a video years ago with the guy who with the Tetris messages and it was like big like blocks of Tetris and pages and pages on that. So you need to fix that, okay? You need to think about all of these things and you have to be able to look for reassurance within yourself and not constantly go to your partner to get that validation that you're looking for. Very, very important 
when you're trying to reattract somebody and show them changes. And the last big thing I want to talk about, kind of encompassing what I'm saying today, is you have to know yourself. How many of you really know yourself? Most of you don't really know yourself. And if you don't believe me, listen to some of the feedback that your partner has given you. Now, like I said, exes aren't always truthful. Uh, and sometimes they're toxic and they gaslight. But if you're seeing patterns from people in your life that are giving you feedback about some of these behaviors, you have to know your weaknesses. Where are you struggling? What are your capabilities? Okay, you have to know yourself. Uh, what's going to trigger you? Okay, if you get in front of your ex again, what is it that they're going to say and do that's going to make you lose emotional self-control and cause them to lose attraction, right? Maybe you have an issue of jealousy, okay? If you know that and you're in no contact, well, what are you going to do to fix this? What are you going to do to manage this, okay? If your ex comes back, how are you going to handle that? How are you going to stop being so controlling over somebody? Uh, because it will ultimately just push them away. Now, of course, that doesn't mean they can just do whatever they want. Of course not. You want to be respected, but you also want to respect them. And finding that balance isn't easy. But that's why I was talking about boundaries earlier, because that can help really solve some issues. Um, you want to be prepared. I like to over-prepare. Over-prepare. Because if you really want to get your ex back, you're really going to have to make long-lasting changes. And long-lasting changes take time. If you go to the gym for three weeks, are you different? Have you changed? No, of course not. Maybe you've lost one pound or two pound or maybe 10 pounds if you've got the violent diarrhea. But how long is that going to sustain, right? It's a lot different if you're going to the gym for six to nine months versus six weeks. It's a lot different, right? You'll, you'll feel much different. You'll feel in much better shape. You'll feel much better about yourself. Well, the same thing goes for emotionally as well, okay? So in order to figure these things out, you really have to understand what happened in your early childhood. And this is why we talk about it all the time. And we truly believe that mental health and attachment issues go hand in hand. So you have got to work on your mental health issues. Go to a therapist, do the workbooks every day or the creative healing course every day. Watch our videos every day. We're focused on getting you to a truly confident place, which will absolutely attract your ex and new people. That's the wonderful thing about staying committed to personal growth and having the mindset of I'm going to better myself. I'm going to be the best version of myself. It attracts anybody and everybody. Okay, it's not just limited to trying to get an ex back. And that's why I've been so focused on it since we started the channel. Because I want to see you guys successful. You don't need to get your ex back to be successful. Okay, many of you will find people that you have a much better relationship with your ex. Many of you will outgrow your ex. And I know it's hard to hear right now, but... Many people watching this video are in unhealthy situations where they've been mistreated or things were toxic and, un, you know, you know, no communication, no real joy. Um, it was just a matter of repeating early attachment traumas. But the more you stay focused on the personal growth, the more you're going to be able to change your ex's mind through truly healthy ways that I've explained in this video. Not manipulative nonsense like, if you text your ex this message, it will get them back. It will force your ex to want you back. You can literally rewire their brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can force people and literally rewire their brain. Okay. Well, listen, I know you guys get desperate. And you hear stuff like that and you think it's true, but you know, you can't force anybody and you really don't want to force anybody. You want them to want you back naturally, just like they did when they first met you. And when you get to a healthy place, you can do that. Okay. So if you want to get my help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. Of course, I do email coaching and I do Skype. You can get my creative healing course 
only on my website and my workbooks there as well. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.